Now, very similar to the problem that we just dealt with, in this question, I'm given two smaller, simpler reactions, I guess, and I'm given Kc values for them. I'm going to go ahead and call these uh, reactions reaction 1 and reaction 2. I'm then told, after having been given this information, or asked, uh, given this information, what is the Kc expression or value going to be for this overall equation? So Kc for this reaction is the big mystery. How do we do that? Well, similar to what we did in our previous example, we're going to manipulate these two equations in order to have them convert somehow into something where when I add them up, they give me this overall equation down here. And then I can do some algebraic manipulation mumbo-jumbo with their ex uh, equilibrium expression constants to get the overall equilibrium expression constant for this thing too. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by looking at equation number one. I'm going to try and see if there are parts or elements of it that are the same or similar to the uh, overall equation we're trying to get to down here. I've got this COO, cobalt oxide. I don't see that anywhere in this equation down here. I have H2. It appears on the left side of this equation. And I see it appearing on the left side of my overall equation. Okay, that's good. I've got this uh, cobalt solid. Well, it doesn't appear down here. But I've got water, gas, it appears on the right side of the equation. So it kind of looks like, at least, this uh, H2 and this H2 match and this H2O and this H2O match. So I don't really need to do anything with equation 1 as far as moving it around or multiplying it by anything. Because I've still got a 1 coefficient for both these they match and a 1 coefficient for both those they match. So good there. Now let's take a look at the second equation. Are there parts of the second equation of reaction that resemble parts of this? Well, I don't have this cobalt oxide anywhere in here. Do I see this carbon monoxide? Well, I do. It's on the left side of the equation here. It's on the right side of the equation down here. So that kind of matches up a little bit. Now I've got this cobalt solid. It doesn't appear anywhere down here. This carbon dioxide, it's on the right side of the equation up here. It's on the left side of the equation down there. Is there anything that I can do then with equation 2 to make it come closer to resembling this overall target equation we're trying to get to? Well, yeah, obviously I can see that cobalt, or, sorry, carbon monoxide is on the left side of the equation here. It's on the right side of the equation down here. And this thing's on the right side of the equation. It's on the left side of the equation down here. So what I'm going to have to do is take this equation and reverse it. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to take equation 2 and I write down cobalt solid added to uh, carbon dioxide. I'm going to leave off the gas to save myself room. Gives me carbon, or, sorry, cobalt oxide plus carbon monoxide. Now, what does that do to the Kc? If you take any equation and reverse it, which you totally can, the new Kc for it becomes the reciprocal. So it becomes 1 over 490. So it's 490 here. I flip it. It becomes 1 over 490. Now you'll notice that equation 1 here, I didn't have to do anything to it because everything happened to be on the right or the correct side with respect to where it lies in the final overall equation. I also didn't have to multiply it by anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 1 I'm just, just going to bring it straight down here. So I've got cobalt oxide plus H2, and then I've got cobalt solid plus H2O. Now, the Kc value, because I haven't done, made any changes, is going to be the same. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add these two equations up, and hopefully I will see some things canceling out. Hopefully when I'm all done, it will look exactly like this target equation here. Here we've got cobalt solid on the right side of the second equation. On the left side of the first, algebraically they cancel each other out. I've also got cobalt oxide on the right side of the first equation. On the left side of the second, they also cancel each other algebraically. Now I'll bring everything down. I've got CO2 plus H2, uh, sorry, plus H2 gas in equilibrium with CO and H2O. Does that look like the target equation I'm trying to get to? Yeah, I think it does. I've got H2 and CO2 on the left side. I've got those both right here. On the right side, I've got CO and H2O. I totally have that there. So what's the overall Kc going to be for this? Well, when you take two equations and you add them together, you have to multiply their individual Kc's in order to get a new Kc for the new overall equation. So this first Kc value I'm going to call K1. The second one I'm going to call K2. And whatever the K value is for this, I'm going to call K3. K3 then is going to be equal to K1 multiplied by K2. I'll let you throw those into your calculator to get an actual answer to that on your own.